So in today's video, we are going to talk about the continuous random variable, probability density function, and the cumulative distribution function. So let's begin. If the range of remember last week we talked about a discrete random variable. So if the range of a random variable x contains an interval either finite or infinite of real numbers, then x is a continuous random variable. Remember last year we said when you have a random variable x here, and when x takes in discrete values such as 1, 2, 3, 4, then we say that it is a discrete random variable. But for instance, imagine when you have this interval, that's the open interval 1, 2, you realize that here x takes in values between 1 and 2, so it makes x continuous. So for this, our x becomes a continuous random variable. And this is a discrete random variable because it takes in discrete values and here it is continuous variables um, numbers. All right, so let's go on. So the sample space of the continuous random variable must be continuous and cannot be discrete. So in most of the practical problems, continuous random variable represents measured data such as all possible heights, weights, temperature, and so on. While the discrete random variable represents count data, such as the number of something and so on. So, we have other examples. So, this particular function here is called a probability density function, and there's the properties of it. So, the property is that our f of x, which happens to be the probability, should always be greater than zero, and this holds because probability is always positive. We don't have a negative probability. It lies within 0 and 1, and when you find the total of our all probabilities in a continuous random variable, we should get 1. And the probability between A and B of this particular interval here is given as this formula here. So these are the properties of the PDA, that's the probability density function. So in case of continuous random variables, the probability at a point is always 0. The reason is that, for instance, if you are finding the probability of x equals a, that means you are going to integrate from a to a here. So, you know, when you put in our limit, we we'll of course get 0. So that's when we said this is 0 for all possible values. So, let's move on to the cumulative distributing function. So, the cumulative distribution function f of x of a continuous random variable x with a PDF f of x is um, giving us this particular function that we have here. So that means that when you are finding for the PDF, the sorry, the CDF of your PDF is given by this particular relation here, and we can quote it here. So let's try and quote it here. So we have our CDF probability of x. So here, notice that our t here is just a dummy variable, right? Okay, so that's it. So one can write this definition into, so for instance, when you have the, um, to find a probability between a and B, and you're writing the CDF for it, you have to write it in two ways. I hope you get that. All right. Where your f of x here is d dx f of x. All right. So you realize that when you integrate both sides, I mean, you get the integral of f of x will be equal to big f of x here, as you can see here. So if x is a continuous random variable with PDF f of x, then this is the mean. This is a formula for finding for the mean. This is a formula for finding for your expectation of x squared. And this is a formula for finding for your variance. Okay. So don't worry, in our subsequent videos, you will learn how to um, use this to work. But that's not our main focus today. So we have a question here. And the question says a random variable has the PDF of fx given by this particular function here. So let me write it since I know it's not visible here. So let me write it here for you. So we have the function given to be f of x and it's a PDF. So it's given as cx e 
minus x for all x greater than 0 and 0 otherwise. So the question said with this particular PDF that we have, we are supposed to find the value for C and also find the CDF. So we are supposed to find the value for C and find the CDF. So let's start work. So remember we said that for our PDF, one property is that the integral from minus infinity to infinity of all our probabilities uses one. To realize that here, our x here is greater than zero. So that means that here we are going to start from zero to infinity because you know x is strictly positive here. It doesn't take any negative values. And our f of x here is c x e minus x dx and this should be equal to one. We are supposed to find the value for c from this particular um, calculation. So when you do our integration, you know c is a constant so we can bring it outside. We have the integral from zero to infinity x e minus x dx equals 1 and you should know that with this particular integral we have to use uh, the integration by parts so let's learn the trick the shortcut for doing integration by parts so we have our u dv where our u is our x our dv is our e minus x so we differentiate this until we get 0 so when you differentiate x you get 1 when you differentiate 1 you get 0 when you integrate this you get minus e minus x Further integration gives us e minus x. Then you cross multiply. So when you multiply this by this, you get minus x e minus x. Then all minus this time this. So e minus x. So that means that this is the result when we do this integration. You can use the normal formula for the integration by parts, and you're going to end up with this. So that means this will give us c. Then we have minus x e minus x then minus e minus x so our limit is from 0 to infinity all this gives us 1 so when you put infinity inside you realize that you are going to get e raised to the power negative a very large number which is going to give us 0 when you put infinity here so you are going to get another 0 then minus now we are about putting in our lower limit so when you put 0 here you know when s is 0 here to make everything here 0 and when x is 0 here, it will make this 1 because any number raised to the power 0 is 1. So we get minus 1 here. And all this equals 1. So when we do this particular commutation, we will get c will be equal to 1. So that means that our c is simply 1. So that's the value for our c. The next question said to find for our cdf. So cum cumulative distribution function. So remember. We said it is giving us the integral of this particular formula that we have here. So this is a formula for computing our um, CDF. But remember that in the question, our x takes in positive values. So that means that our x is going to start from... 0 and you are going to get to x. I hope you get that. So our f of t, in this case f of x, because the function of x will be c x e minus x dx. If you are supposed to do this integration and we can bring our c outside, then remember that when we did this integration we had um so we've already done this integration here. So I'm not going to go through again. I'm just going to write the answer we had. So we had minus x e minus x, then minus e minus x. So with this one, the limits are from 0 to x. So when you put in your x, you're going to get the same thing as we have here. So you get minus x e minus x, then minus e minus x. And when you put in 0, now everything here becomes 0, but you are going to get minus 1 here. So that means you can simplify this further, and this becomes your 
CDF, which is your cumulative distribution function. So that's it with um, the continuous random variable, the PDF, which stands for probability density function, and the CDF, which stands for the cumulative distribution function. So thank you very much. In our next video, we'll be talking about some discrete probability distribution like the Bernoulli binomial distribution and the rest. Thank you.